Hey everyone, and welcome back to Chinook Valley. I'm finally back from my trip and all caught up with work, so I had time to sit down and make a City Skylines video. It's been forever since we've been inside Chinook Valley, but I am so glad to be back. I have to admit, when I first sat down, I wasn't at all feeling creative, but I was reflecting on my trip, and after spending a lot of time in airports across Europe and America, I realized that I had never built one in City Skylines. So I started sketching my idea out on some pen and paper, looking at Google Maps for some inspiration, and I have to admit the end product looks phenomenal, and I cannot wait to finish it over the next couple of episodes in this series. It's also definitely a plus to be far away from downtown with its terrible FPS issues. We're beginning with this time lapse of me building the runway and taxiways. I'll rejoin you later with some live building for the airport layout and highways, and then we'll finish off. I hope you all enjoy episode 10, CVY International Airport. Alright guys, and uh, welcome to live mode of this episode. We're uh, 
looking at what I just built in the time lapse. Um, off camera, I added in some uh, some runway markings and uh, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so what I'll do is uh, I'll give that a quick look, and then we're gonna dive into building um, the infrastructure around our airport, uh, parking lots, cell phone lots, garages, all that kind of stuff. And I'll also lay out some plans. Uh, I'm not gonna finish this this episode. Uh, this will probably take a couple episodes to really flesh out because. This is something I've been really excited to do for a while. So let's pop into build mode so I can show you guys around. Um, so you'll see here I laid down our runways. Uh, so we have um, uh, runway zero to right and runway zero to left. Uh, we have our blast pads. We have our aiming points. Uh, we have our touchdown points. Uh, we have our pappy lights. Um, and I actually think I did that wrong. That's aiming, that's touchdown. And then we have our distance markers here as well. Uh, and then just mirrored on either side uh, because even though cities doesn't do runways being, you know, uh, two-way, uh, they technically are. So we have runway 20 right and runway 20 left, um, which if you guys are well aware, that means that these runways are about 20 degrees off of north. Uh, so they are almost north-south runways, but they are 20 degrees offset, um, which is why, uh, and, in, and just so you guys are aware, um, in my mind, uh, when I do this view, uh, I'm marking that as north and that as south, that as west and that as east, obviously, uh, which is why you have a 20 degree offset from north, which is where those runway numbers come from. I'm trying to do this as, as realistic as possible because I'm well aware that when people on YouTube do airports, uh, they always mess something up. So I'm trying to, be this as, to do this as realistic as possible. Although if you guys see something wrong, uh, obviously please let me know. I'm not in the arrow space field. Um, I did do quite a bit of research and I've modeled this after a couple airports. Um, but please, if you see something, uh, please let me know uh, if you think that this is wrong. I also tried to get this uh, pretty much on uh, a good length. Um, and I'll, So I did this, I researched like the maximum length of a, a jumbo jet. Um, it was, I think it was somewhere around 3,000 meters is normally what you'll see for the longest runways. Um, 3,000 meters is really hard to hit, so I kind of shrunk it down to 2,500 uh, meters uh, for this, for the sake of this game and the scaling. I think it looks pretty good. It takes up a chunk of space. I mean, it's a huge amount of space. So I think, realistically, it, it's, it looks pretty realistic when you look at it next to the, the city. When I look at downtown. This is pretty much as wide as downtown is. So that's kind of... Think of it in the scale of the game. Um, I'm well aware that you know this might not be enough enough runway for a, a 747 or probably an A380 to land at, but um, you know I'm trying to get it in with uh, realism, but also remembering that the game does scale things down quite a bit. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to build out our infrastructure over here. So this is going to be like the daily parking lot and the parking garages and the cell phone lot. And I have a drawing over here that I'm looking at on my right that I kind of pen and paper just drew it real quick to kind of look at it and kind of see how everything would fit. So what we're going to do first is we're going to lay down the garages um, and we'll go from there just to see how much space they take out. Uh, and I'm using this new search box and well new to me, I mean obviously I just got back. So I'm going to hopefully see if this, this works. I want to, I want the biggest garage we can use monolithically. So. Um, and we're going to have to anarchy because it's going to want to hit those pillars. So I like this one, but the problem is, is I want these to kind of clip and it has that end of there. So that's not going to work. This one looks like it's probably going to be our best bet. And I want to start it right there. So let's see what that looks like here. I think that looks perfect. Um, the only problem that I have with this is it's going to land on our terminal road so since I don't want that um, what I'm gonna do is just for sake of right now um, I'm going to bring a dirt road in um, and it's just gonna run this way we're just gonna run it all the way into where I want this to stop which is gonna be right there so this dirt road's not gonna stick we'll end up changing it eventually but this gives me the ability to lay down our parking garages, not on our departures. Um, well, I guess that would be the arrivals road. So, and if they clip just like, so you, yeah, we can't clip them. It's not what we want. Um, Cause they're just not gonna look right. So we'll have to use move it to probably get them all right. Uh, and so the easiest way to do this will be to move it in 
as close as possible. We're going to line these pillars up here. Uh, and we'll probably just clip them into each other, just like so. And then we're going to make sure that that's lined up pretty properly. It is. And so what we're going to do from there is we will use move it to copy. We're going to make it conform to our squares. And then we'll do that. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. It uh, looks like we have a little not clipped enough. So what we'll do is we'll take this one and we'll bring it in. Oh, we have to turn off that. So we'll bring it in right just there. So now they're clipped together. And it's going to be one big garage. But you know, looking at some of the places, this is kind of accurate. Um, at least it looks like it to me um, because a lot of these places are definitely higher than four stories so my imagination you know this is this might look like a big garage facility and it probably won't ever get to the use at which you know we're doing it right now but I think I think it will look good in the end so um we'll keep going I might you know who knows I might end up being completely and totally wrong um, which is always a possibility so we'll lay it down there we'll get rid of the copy and then instead of having it lock into the bricks it might just be easier just to always come in here and line up the pillars since um, probably unknowingly to the model creator that makes clipping very easy um, we'll copy it again looks like we won't need four this time so we'll lay it in there we'll kill that one and we'll come back in and clip these together and we'll see if we need that one at the very end there let's bring it in a little bit closer so we can see Oh, I think we went too far that time. There we go. I'm going to, I think that whoever created this model, you guys are a genius because those pillars make it line up just perfect. Um, I mean, I wish there was one that clipped a little bit better because obviously it wouldn't have, um, you know, you would not build, well, first of all, you wouldn't build a garage this big, to be quite honest. Um, and even, and then you wouldn't have, like, it wouldn't look like this. Um, but, I think you know we can probably actually you know what um, yeah this is too much so let's just bring it off of the sides um, looking at it that way so we're gonna kill three on this side we'll kill three on the other side and then see what we're left with and we'll see if it looks a bit more realistic yes I think that looks a bit more realistic in the sense of how big a garage is just kind of I'm looking at Google Maps as well while I'm looking at this so I think that's a bit more realistic um, yeah I think I think that makes sense um, normally they probably would wouldn't be this long but you know it's really hard to kind of clip them together in a way that makes sense although now that I'm thinking about it it actually isn't that hard so I'm gonna redesign this on the fly I'm sure you guys are just loving this <laughs> What we'll do is we'll bring this out so it looks like it's eight units um, that way so we'll come out 16 units and we'll see if that works the way that we want so let's just bring this garage in how does it line up all right and we'll use move it to line up hmm what are these things I just noticed those laying around at the top up there have those been there the whole time or have I just been going crazy I guess um, I guess this is an unfinished parking garage but uh, okay you know whatever um, we'll just clip it here and I think this will actually look pretty cool so we'll clip that there. We'll clip this one in as well. And then we kind of get that really cool look there. And then what we'll do is we'll just copy this one here. Oops. Nope, nope, that's not what we wanted. I've been playing other games, so the escape key does different. Th that's another thing in the game I'm playing and uh, ha trying to use it 
here is obviously pausing the game. All right, so we'll bring uh, that one in there. And I think that looks just a lot better. I like it a lot. Okay, cool. And so now what we can do is we will delete this. We'll obviously need uh, these roads because these are the entry points for uh, the garage itself. Uh, even though I don't like that it is, uh, you can't actually see it. Oh, there it is. There's a dedicated entry for the garage, um, which is good. Because what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a daily lot kind of here, a big, big lot. Uh, and it will kind of meet with the exit before it gets back onto the exit road and have a toll plaza kind of terminal or like a toll. So you can pay your... Um, you can pay your ticket, you know, because you've been parking there for so long. Uh, obviously, the hourly would be a little bit cheaper than the day because it's by hour, not by the day. But you have, like, your automated ticket, and the machine would tell you how much you owe, and you know how it works. Uh, you guys have been to airports before, so that's kind of what I'm looking at there. So I think I think I like this garage complex. I'm just looking at some other airports in this similarly sized area. I think um, I think this makes sense. I, think, I like how it's centered, um, and I think, yeah, I think it, it'll look good. Uh, it might... I had a drawing of a bit bigger space, but I realistically, uh, you know, like this is, think about this, this is four stories of garage. Realistically, um, let's see, two, four, six, eight. Okay, so probably like, let's just do an easy guesstimate of like probably 300 spots per garage, 300, 600, 900, 1200, um, 1600, 1900. Um, so, so that totally... That was not right. That math was extremely wrong. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. <laughs> not, not sixteen. I cannot add together. Uh, so fifteen, uh, and <laughs> and then eighteen. Uh, so total, total of eighteen hundred parking spaces. Um, I think that makes sense for a three terminal airport. Um, yeah, uh, it probably won't serve that much. Um. That much traffic, I have a feeling that this three terminal airport, I mean, when you think about it, like each terminal only has one, two, three, four, five, six gates. So this is like only got, uh, you know, uh, you know, 18 um, gates in total. Uh, and one of this would be international. So realistically, for domestic flights, you've only got 12 gates. Um, in my head, at least. Uh, so, so I think that's enough parking spaces, uh, especially combined with the fact that we're going to have a, a, a daily lot as well. So this is just kind of an hourly. So this is realistically for people coming in, picking up, you know, leaving their car for the maybe for the weekend. Um, maybe you're paying, may, you know, maybe. Oh, also maybe think about rental car stuff. Maybe the rental cars will also be in one of these garages. So uh, yeah. I'm spending a lot of time justifying my my idea here. It's it's my city, so you guys, if you don't like it, you can comment. I you guys will do that anyway. Um, but it's mine, so yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So what I'm thinking now is I'll probably need to build uh, a base for our daily lot, um, and my thought process on that is is I definitely want it to be perp I want it to be in the same grid as the garage. Uh, and it's going to need to have a road that kind of brings it that way. It obviously will not line up here. Um, and then, so it'll come around this way. And then it'll have a road bringing it in off of that way. So, I'm thinking, I, I like the idea of a law, a big open daily lot. Uh, so let's see what we have for parking lots. Um, like I said, this is the new, new to me uh, search box. So I'm still trying to figure out how it organizes this thing. I was used to the other one, but this one is definitely much faster. So it looks like it's different. So 10 by 6 is the biggest we got here. Whew, and that's not a lot, is it? It'll be easier if we do it this way, I think. And that doesn't line up the way we want it to, but that's fine. I think if we just bring it there, and then we bring our dirt road up, and then we bring it that way. Perfect. So now what we can do is put just a ton of these lots. And honestly, I think that might be too far up. Um, so let's bring it in here. So let's have that. And let's 
delete that and that, and then we'll use the better bulldoze tool to get rid of all of that. Welcome to time-lapse commentary. First item for us to discuss is going to be schedule. Last year I held myself to a once a week upload schedule uh, and I was pretty good about it. I think I hit that most of the time. So this year I'm going to try and stay on that kind of schedule but I'm not going to be as rigid. It's really hard to force creativity uh, and I find that I do much better when I let myself kind of get excited about the project. So I'm going to let myself slip if I'm not feeling very creative. But at the very least, I'm going to do once every other week. So you'll get something out of me at least every other week. But more than likely, you'll get something at least every week. Secondly, I want to talk about the fact that we're over 200 subscribers. That's insane to me. Like, I, can't, I can't even believe it. I, I think we went past 200 while I was away, and that just blew my mind. Uh, and at this time, we're at 248. Only a couple months in, I'm at 248, and I realize that there are other YouTubers out, YouTubers out there that are way ahead of me in subscriber count. But to me, it, it's amazing that 248 of you are, are liking what I'm building. That's, that's amazing. So hopefully, uh, in the next couple of months, we'll be able to hit 500. Uh, that's kind of my goal. Um, and maybe I'm thinking that by the end of the year, 1,500? You know, I'm not. I don't know. Maybe we'll we'll kind of see how we're how we're doing. Uh, but uh, that that would be just an awesome goal for me to hit. It's fifteen hundred by the end of the year. I also really want to give a shout out to two people who have kind of been super awesome and supportive on Twitter and on YouTube. Uh, Taser here and Q Planner are both two amazing YouTubers that if you're not watching, you should totally go watch. Uh, they are linked on my channel sidebar under the recommended channels. Um, they're both doing some amazing stuff. So I, again, I really, really, really do recommend them. So let's now talk about what we're building here. Um, you'll notice that this build is doing most of the passenger infrastructure, so the terminals, the daily parking garage, uh, the daily parking lot, and the hourly parking garage, the rental car return, all that kind of stuff that you would normally see uh, as an everyday person going to an airport. But you'll also notice that I built the taxiway kind of all around the runway, which you wouldn't normally do unless you had something on that side of the runway. And that's because we're going to have something over there. I'm going to build a cargo terminus, uh, and this is something that you always have at an airport normally. Um, you probably don't really notice it, but they're definitely over there. Uh, they're normally kind of on a different exit from the main exit to the airport. They have like a their own entry and entrance and that kind of stuff, uh, and that's because FedEx, UPS, USPS, they all need to fly their mail, their packages uh, across the country, just, just like you want to fly across the country. Um, and they tend to use jumbo jets and jets, and this, normally the same jets as passenger jets actually, like the 747 is is used in both passenger and cargo capacities. So it needs the long runways, um, which you normally don't find at international or national airports. Thus, that's why they're located there. So uh, the next episode, we'll probably be touching on building that cargo terminus and laying out the taxiways for that, and you know, doing like a, a transfer station, all that kind of stuff that I think will be really, really cool. And since Chinook is very rail focused, I might try to bring in uh, like a little rail yard as well, which I think will be pretty neat. Also, you may have noticed that the planes uh, in my airport are using the entire length of the runway, uh, which itself is pretty long. Uh, if you want to be able to do this yourself, all you have to do is download the Advanced Vehicle Options mod and edit the plane's acceleration and braking constant. I set mine to 0.3 and 0.5 respectively. 
I'll leave you the rest of the time lapse and some music, and I will see you at the closing cinematics. I want to thank you all for watching this episode, and if you're liking what we're doing so far, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you do decide to subscribe, you might also want to press the little bell icon so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. If you enjoy my building style, you might also want to check out my other series, San Seguro. It's a larger urban city set on the California coast. As always, if you want to stay up to date with what's going on in Chinook Valley or San Seguro, follow me on Twitter, cogwheel underscore YT. I respond to all my YouTube comments and tweets, so if you have any ideas or suggestions, please send them my way. Thanks for watching. Bye.